This is what I'm talking about. Once just a pipe dream, but it looks like the star-studded crossover fight is about to become a reality, folks. Some think it can top Floyd Mayweather, Manny Pacquiao's pay-per-view buys, but Max, do you think this fight is being overhyped? As a sporting event, obviously, because it's not going to be competitive. But as an event itself, not really. Stephen A., I'd like to take you through a little thought experiment if you got a minute. You know, um, and, Take your and time. this is, by the way, something I do to prove to people. This is something I do to prove to people that boxing, but in this case it could be MMA combat sports, is actually their favorite sport, whether they know it or not. If you come to a, an intersection, a street corner, and on one corner the guy's playing pickup basketball, on the other they're playing football, on the third someone's putting a golf ball, and on the fourth corner there's a fight. Where's the crowd? Around the fight, right? Boxing and, and MMA is intrinsically more compelling than other sports. It's not a metaphor for something. Nothing represents anything. It's literal. One guy separates the other guy from his will. He imposes his will on him, knocks him down. Other guy can't get up. He's separated the other guy from his own will. It's a literal manifestation of what all other sports simply represent. It's more interesting. So then the question becomes, why don't more people follow boxing, for example? And, and that answer is also pretty straightforward. If on one corner I redid the experiment and it's LeBron and KD going at it, and on the other corner J.J. Watt's trying to get at Tom Brady and Tiger Woods is putting a golf ball and then two no-names are fighting, well, now still you get some crowd around the fight. That's how good fighting is. But now it's a little different. In other words, when you don't know the characters involved in sports, which is how we sell this stuff, which is the way human beings understand the world, storytelling, if you don't know the characters, you're not invested in them, you don't know the obstacles, you don't know what they're up against, you're not as interested. So be, it, what we have here is a boxer, Floyd Mayweather, and no one else is as famous in his sport as he is. Pacquiao was the other guy, and he beat him already. And then we have McGregor, same thing. There's no other name in MMA as big as McGregor. And, so in, and they're around the same size. So in the absence of each having an opponent in their own sport, people who love fighting for the reasons I just said and need characters that they know are invested in want to see these two fight each other. That's what's going on here. So as an event, it's understandable along those lines. But as a sporting event, because it's gonna take place in the ring, McGregor's got no shot. The answer is, it's not being overhyped as an event, just as a sporting event. Well, I appreciate you taking both sides of that, Max Kellerman. I will tell you, uh, unlike you, see, <laughs> I will defer. I will defer to your level of expertise because this is pugilism here. As much as I am a fan, I defer to an expert. Take notes and learn how to do that yourself. You should learn. So listen up. I'm only deferring. I'm only going to say what I got to say, but I'm deferring. Here's what I suspect. I think this fight will live up to the hype because of McGregor. See, what I love about this, it's not just the hype, but it's the fact that McGregor is not the kind of person that then is going to walk up in there and complain about how his shoulder hurt because he misses hitting Floyd 400 times. No, 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 no. I don't care if McGregor has to end up cheating, trying to hit him with elbows or something. I don't care that it's a boxing match. You can't convince me that, not, that some form of UFC tactics are not going to find a way to infiltrate the proceedings. I don't believe it for one second. I believe something like that is going to happen. I believe that McGregor, being a UFC fighter, having taken punches in the past, knows that he can take, or believes rather, that he can take a punch from Floyd. I think he's going to stalk him. I think he's going to attack him. And as a result, Floyd is going to have to school him and beat him down all at the same time. And that's why I think this will live up to the hype. Because it's not one of those situations where there's going to be a lot of dancing around. That ain't McGregor. McGregor comes, he's stepping to you, he's looking to knock you out. I don't believe he's going to touch Floyd. Neither do you. We all know the brilliance of Floyd Money Mayweather in a boxing ring, and these are going to be boxing rules. I almost feel sorry for how McGregor is going to get embarrassed and beat down. But I also am a fan of who has watched guys get completely outclassed. And I'll use this analogy, Max, because again, I speak, but you know this stuff because you're the expert with the boxing. You remember I ran Barkley and how outclassed he was Blade. by Tommy the Hitman Hearns, and then all of a sudden, sure. what? You understand? And, 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 and Hitman, the Hitman, who I love dearly, 
went tumbling down. What I'm saying to you is when I think McGregor, Mayweather, and I'll defer to you, I think about, okay, I know who the brilliant individual is going to be. Is McGregor going to get lucky and clip him with one punch? Is that possible? That's a great that quote. Alone, That's that a great alone, that alone has Barkley me thinking, Hearns. who knows? Go ahead. Go ahead. That's a great that's a great pull Barkley Hearns but because it was a crude kind of slugger against a very classy boxer right. and the slugger was able to weather the boxing storm and get in and knock Hearns out and then by the way beat Hearns going. again in the rematch um, wh which is weird cuz you wouldn't think they're in the same class but that's what happened here's the difference McGregor is a very talented fighter with his hands. I've seen him score knockouts going backwards. It's not easy to do. Sugar Ray Robinson used to do that. Yeah. But even if McGregor is the most talented boxer of all time, let's say somehow he happens to be more naturally gifted than Sugar Ray Robinson, it takes a long time to make a good 10-round fighter, period. I mean, just a guy who gets into the ring and can go 10 good rounds with a contender. That takes a long time. Usually, boxing matchmakers will tell you it takes five, six years to take a guy from, you know, the, from the beginning to turn him into a decent 10-round fighter. That's just a decent 10-round fighter. That's just a guy who can go 10 rounds with a contender. McGregor is not trying to go 10 rounds with a contender. He's trying to beat the best fighter in the world when last seen. One of the greatest pure boxers who ever lived who's been doing it since he's a little baby. I mean, it's total muscle memory with Floyd, and McGregor is trying to just wake up one day. I know he has some boxing in his background, but he's trying to essentially wake up one day and become not a 10-round contender type fighter, but a guy capable of beating one of the best ever, and he's trying to do it in a matter of months. I don't care how talented he is. Even I, Rand Barkley, been boxing all his life. You don't just roll out of bed, pick it up, and, well, and, and beat a really good fighter, let alone Floyd. Here's, my, here's what I'm going to challenge you on as the ultimate boxing voice. None of what you say I dispute. My problem with listening to you is you don't seem to take into account what if you get caught. And I don't mean by getting caught because he's skillful enough to catch you. I mean you being asleep because you're so dominant. You're so class. You, yep. You've so outclassed him. You're so brilliant or whatever. Like, for example, I know Madonna's a boxer. Marcos Madonna's a boxer. I know he's been boxing for a long time. But we all know he's slower than a snail with arthritis. Not that snails get arthritis, but you get my point. Metaphorically speaking, he's slower than a snail with arthritis, for crying out loud. And he See, hit Floyd going. in that third round, and Floyd was stunned. And I'm just saying, for me, Conor McGregor, he might cheat to do it. Let me give you an example. He might cheat to do it. Go ahead, Max. Let me, let, me, let me give you an example. Muhammad Ali, when he was still Cassius Clay, used to call the round that he would knock guys out in. Right. He would say, you know, this ain't no jive. Cooper's going to fall in five. Henry Cooper, the British fighter, goes over to England, fighting Henry Cooper, who has a big left hook. And he's beating him so easily, he wants it to last five rounds so he can stop him in the fifth round. This is according to Ali. Right. And so he's kind of taking it easy, looking around ringside, carrying him a little bit, gets caught with a left hook, almost knocked out. So sure, if Floyd takes McGregor so lightly that he's, he's playing with him to give people their money's worth and gets caught with something, the fight could get interesting. And I think Floyd will try to extend it a little bit in the beginning. And for those who think... Well, no, Floyd can't knock out McGregor. He has such a good chin. Fighters with good chins are the ones who don't get hit on the chin. There's no way McGregor's going to be defensively good can't enough to avoid that. getting hit wherever hold on, hold Floyd on, wants to hit him. Hold on, hold on. You've said that on several occasions. Let me throw out a name at you because we're talking boxing. You know, it's Randall Tex Cobb. We had a guy by the name Talk of Larry chin. Holmes, by the label way of Larry Holmes, one of the great heavyweight champions of all time, or one of the greatest right hands of all time, damn near crying in well, the ring because he was so frustrated because he hit this dude with everything, and Randall Cobb just kept smiling at him. You could run across somebody that you hit, and they just keep coming. Is that possible? Is yes. that possible? It's possible. Rand Randy Cobb, Randall Tex Cobb was one, although Holmes had a good but not great right hand. His jab was his thing. I thought it was great Randall right Cobb hand. Randall Cobb was one. Marvin Hagler was another. 
Jake, he had a good right hand. Jake Lamotta was another. You had guys with great chins. It's called chin, but really what it is is they tuck their chin. They're defensively responsible enough that they take punches in other areas. Literally, they're, they're avoiding getting hit on the chin. Okay. And then even when they get hit there, they take it better than most. But yeah. a novice fighter can't avoid getting hit on the chin the same way. He hasn't. It's not muscle memory. His chin will be exposed, and Floyd will hit it as he pleases. You do bring up a good point. If Floyd is clowning because he wants to give everyone a show, now all of a sudden something interesting can happen. Well, what Maybe. about what I about doubt it? But, Floyd, but by the way, has before, never taken anyone lightly. That's true. He's never taken anyone lightly. That's why we're not underestimating why him. We expect Conor McGregor right. to get schooled and annihilated. But the flip side, again, just playing devil's advocate. Is it possible, Max, that job. he could hit that he yes. could hit Conor McGregor and Conor McGregor will keep coming? Is that possible? Here's what's possible. Floyd early in his career had hand problems. Could, if he hit, and yeah. this is the first comment I, ma I made for the first Floyd Mayweather fight I ever covered live broadcast against Arturo Gaddy. When people yep. were saying, how can Gaddy win? Bob Costas asked in me, Atlantic how can City. Gaddy win? And in I Atlantic said, City. I was yep. there. And I said, exactly. And I said, well, I suppose if Floyd hits him so much that he breaks his, both his hands on Gaddy's, on Gaddy's head, Gaddy could win that way. And I wasn't, be I, it sounded like I was joking. I meant it. Otherwise, Gaddy had no chance to beat Floyd. Arturo Gaddy, who'd been boxing all his life, who'd been a world champion, had no chance to beat Floyd, I felt, at the time. And so I can tell you again, for Conor McGregor, who does not have the chance Gaddy had then, which was zero, if Floyd breaks both hands on McGregor's head, which I suppose is possible, and he's clowning and taking him lightly, and McGregor lands something quote unquote lucky, then you might have some interesting moments in the fight. <laughs> Otherwise, it's well, Floyd all day. Well, I, and I'm saying to you, it doesn't have to be and. It can be or. Any of those three scenarios that you threw out there, it can be or. Not and, and the hands, and he takes them lightly, and McGregor gets lucky. No, you only need one of those things. You only need him to get lucky, uh, no, or for no. Floyd to break to, to break both hands, or for Floyd to play around. You only need one of those things. This, That's all I'm saying. Let me pay you a compliment. Let me pay you a rare compliment. That is the best defense of why this could be a good fight I've heard yet, Stephen A. Smith. Let's I'm be honest, gentlemen. Overhyped, underhyped, domination, whatever it is, we're all going to be there, and we. Can't I don't wait think it's overhyped. It. I don't think it's overhyped. I, I'm not missing it. Me, either. Tell you Me either. We're going to no, be there. Right. Yeah, who's missing it exactly? When we come back, LeVar Ball in the middle of more controversy. So should the Lakers actually consider passing on Lonzo because of his daddy, Shaq? Your thoughts.